science enthusiasts. Welcome to Spaces Unleashed. Every week on Twitter, we bring an expert to chat live through the Spaces program. And this is bonus content that goes with the Science Podcast. We hope you enjoy the show. So, John, thanks for being back at Half of Science Spaces. Uh, I, I appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm really uh, excited to be here. Now, just a look for a little bit of context. Uh, if, if people click on your, if people click on your profile, um, I don't think you're a local idiot. That's one of the things that's in your profile. Are you still uh, with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, or are you a free agent right now in the CFL? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Um, I right now, I, I decided to take this year off. I didn't think uh, CFO kind of like was messing us around a bit. So I'm like, mm. you know, take this year off. Um, it just wasn't, wasn't worth it for how much they, they kept taking, asking us to take pay cut after pay cut. And I'm like, you guys are we're, really weren't paying us a lot to begin with. So <laughs> cool. I'm just gonna, yeah. So I decided to take this year off and then kind of reevaluate next year. Right. Um, so before we get into some of the other stuff, like you did play f- you did play for the Winnipeg Blue, Bo- Blue Bombers. Uh, what position did you did you play with them? Like, what's uh, what was your position on the team? Yeah, so I played for the Blue Bombers for four years. Uh, my first year, I was a linebacker, and then in the next three, I played fullback. So uh, I basically uh, would just run headfirst into other uh, full grown men that were <laughs> two hundred and fifty plus pounds. It, it was really great stuff. <laughs> um. Did you have you played football all your life? Like w- back way back in high school, did you get the football bug, or where did it come to you a little later? No, yeah, I actually started playing football when I was like nine years old. Me and my oh, okay. brother saw a stupid commercial on TV where a guy was like running with a football and did like a front flip over some guy trying to tackle him, and we thought it was the coolest thing ever. Uh, and <laughs> like looking back now, that was obviously fake, but. Uh, <laughs> We were nine and eleven, and we thought it was the coolest thing ever. Uh, we convinced our parents to play. It was like, and so I've basically been playing football for seventeen straight years. Uh, I swear there was a Edmonton. Uh, they they used to be called the Edmonton Eskimos. They're called the Edmonton Elks now. Um, a guy named Mo. I swear he did a bunch of like flips over people, or maybe he just did flips in the end zone. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think Gizmo Adams, right? Yeah, yeah, Gizmo yeah. Adams. There you go. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So aside from, aside from the foot, the football stuff, uh, a couple, couple other things I'd like to ask you. Um, the one is if we look at your profile, you have two huge dogs. Um, and I love your dog so much and people on Twitter love your dog so much. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your dogs? Yeah, I, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy thinking about my dog sometimes because they're both rescue dogs. I both, I, I adopted both of them separately. Um, I got bone first. Who's my, um, 150 pound great Pyrenees. And it, and it's just so crazy to think about how someone could like abandon them because of how amazing, like, I mean, like I share, I share their lives, their entire lives with all of you. So a lot of, you know, a lot of you follow me and kind of see how amazing they are. Um, so it just, it blows my mind sometimes that, that people abandon them. And, uh, but bone bone, I got first about three years ago. Uh, he was a hundred pounds at nine months and he was, he was bought from a breeder and, uh, the family at, at like six months gave him out to a shelter because he got too big, uh, which was pretty crazy. But, you know, he sat in the shelter for a couple months and by the time I found him, he kind of, he grown up in a shelter so his back legs barely worked he couldn't like he couldn't get into the car he couldn't get up on my bed I always had to like help him up and you know it, it kind of sucks now because for the first couple months like while I was like rehabbing him that's how I was uh like I had to because he couldn't get into things so I had to pick him up and put him in but then he learned that he learned that if he would just sit there that I would pick him up <laughs> Um, so that, now that's what he does. Like, if he, like he's fully capable of jumping into the car, but if he's like feeling lazy. He'll just like sit there and stare at me until I get out and help him in. Um, so it kind of, it kind of sucked that that's how it started. But then, uh, but then, you know, like two years went by and then I decided up another dog and that's when, uh, I found Bailey and I was fostering her at first. 
she was she again she was bought from a breeder and then after two weeks with the family they abandoned her on a farm and the farmer like called the local rescue and was like hey there's a puppy on my farm <laughs> i can't have a puppy on my farm like that's like not something that can happen so they went and picked her up uh, i fostered her and like i don't know like 45 minutes after bringing home her home to foster her i'm like i called the shelter up i'm like yeah i'm gonna adopt this dog <laughs> so uh, that's how bailey kind of came into my life what uh for for people that maybe aren't following you and uh what's what what what's your problem you guys should follow john right now um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what are their personalities like what what are bone and bailey's personalities oh man it is it it's so funny to see um how different they are you know if, if you've never had a dog before and i presume there's not many people that, sh- that haven't had a dog before but if you never had a dog before you know, a dog's a dog's a dog, right? They're all kind of the same. But then when you spend every single day with them and you live with them, you kind of, it's kind of crazy how much personality they have and how much they differ. Like Bone is just like the grumpiest old man. He doesn't want to be bothered. He wants to sleep 23 out of the 24 hours out of the day. Uh, he's very, he's very loving and affectionate when he, but Most of the time, he just wants to be like sleep and be left alone. Bailey is like the complete opposite. And she plays the classic little sister role so hard. Bone sleeping and she's like biting his ear, trying to like get him to play. And then as soon as Bone gets up, she like sprints away. She's like, oh my God, he's actually up and like runs away. Doesn't want anything to do with them. And uh, it's so funny to see how like polar opposites they are. Uh, you know, after spending so much time with them and you, you can kind of see it, you know, in some of the videos and, and posts how, you know, Bailey's, Bailey's a queen. She, you know, uh, she's a queen in and out. Like if I ever, you know, if I've, I've, I, I ever have friends over, like when my mom last week, like Bailey has a spot on the couch and my mom sat in that spot and Bailey literally got into the couch and got within two inches of my mom's face and just stared at her until she moved. Uh, so like she is like she is like the ultimate queen uh and just like the classic little sister and bones like the complete opposite he like you could give him a piece of cardboard and he'd be like oh sweet and then just go lie down on it like it's so funny seeing how how different their person i love it what a great explanation um and you mentioned that uh bone is 100 150 pounds right did i get did i get that right John? yeah yeah all yeah. right, so people who follow Bunsen and Beaker, people think Bunsen's big, and he's a big dog. He's not quite a hundred pounds, so but like Bone would dwarf Bunsen, a tiny <laughs> dog <laughs> compared. Um, and it's, Bailey's not small either. Hey, she's uh, Bailey's about one hundred and twenty <laughs> to one hundred and thirty pounds. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's always so funny to me because Bone is humongous. And the, I always compare Bailey to Bone, and I'm like, oh man, like Bailey, like Bailey's kind of small. Like, I'm like, oh, I wish he got like a little bit bigger. And then, like, one time I brought them to a dog park, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh no, Bailey is ginormous. <laughs> I just compare her to another, an absolute monster of a dog. So, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of funny seeing them actually compared to normal sized dogs sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we we always thought Bunsen was huge until until we took him to uh, our local dog obedience place. They have puppy play, right? And there is a full, there's yeah. a full grown Newfoundlander um, who was like 180 oh, okay. pounds or something insane. Like this dog was so big, and Bunsen yeah. looked like as little as Beaker did when Beaker was a tiny puppy <laughs> puppy to Bunsen. Like it was ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Oh, you do such a great job of talking about your dogs, John. Well done. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so the other question, just to have people know a little bit more about you, you you uh you you definitely put yourself out there with different different causes to support. Um, and I just have so much respect for you for doing that. Um, I you I think you uh, like aside from tweeting about old Dutch chips versus something else. That was was that today or yesterday? <laughs> Yeah, that was, was yesterday. Did you cause that to trend on Canada Twitter? I think you did, didn't? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, we got it all all the way up to number three on trending Canada Twitter last night, and I was just like, "That's that's where you know that's where the the local idiot thing comes into play." Is is sometimes I'll do things like that where I'm like, "Wow, I'm really an idiot." <laughs> um, what for people that didn't for people that had no idea, it was um, old Dutch potato chips versus Lay's. Was that was that what the two that were against each other? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where did you wind up on that? Where did you where did you personally wind up on that old Dutch or Lay's? So, it's really interesting because I grew up in Niles. Oh. Like I, I grew up in Ontario, and old Dutch was not no, a thing. In not Ontario at all. At all. Um. So, like, I grew up Lay's. Like, I grew up, you know, eating Lay's. That's you know, that's what we would eat out there. But like, so when I posted this, I'm like, oh, like Lay's is going to crush no. Old Dutch. And it was like the complete opposite. <laughs> old Dutch, like blew Lay's out of the water. Like I, on my, on my Instagram, it was pretty close, but on Twitter, without a doubt, it was probably like 80, 20 for old Dutch, which was, uh, which was pretty crazy. I didn't, did not expect yeah, that at Definitely. All. That's a prairies and possibly a maritime thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny yeah old dutch that's all i grew up eating like that was the only chip you could get was old dutch chips and and where i grew up in alberta so yeah there was nothing else <laughs> anyways yeah i, no, I exactly. derailed us with a ridiculous i don't know i thought that was pretty good so well done trending um i mean what, yeah, you know, when, when it was bunsen's birthday we were trending too but we never got up to number two so you know well done <laughs> good job um <laughs> um, I was going to talk about the causes that you support and how you put yourself out there. Um, you dressed up in a, a wedding dress and made bank for a charity. Uh, are you? Could you talk about that? That was that was amazing. Yeah. No. Thank you. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was pretty crazy to be honest. It was one of the more out there things I've done. So I, for my first dose, uh, uh, that my first vaccination yep. shot. I decided to dress up in a uh, dress and uh, I raised money for a local LGBTQ plus like outreach group in Winnipeg. And we ended up raising over $11,000 which like blew blew my mind cuz I set a goal of 5,000 and I was like worried about meeting the goal of 5,000. Uh and we met that within the first it we it didn't even take 48 hours and we met the 5,000 and then it just kept going up until like the day I got my vaccination and we, we ended up raising 11,000 and, uh, you know, raising a bunch of awareness, uh, around things we were doing. And it just, so it, it just coincided with, uh, the start of pride month as well. Like my vaccination date was May 31st. Uh, so it was like the day before pride. So, uh, it was it like, it kind of like lined up perfectly and it was, it was really sweet to, to, you know, to, to be able to do that and kind of use my influence for something that was a little bit more than getting, uh, tips to trend on twitter <laughs> no that was super cool um yeah so i don't know i had a lot of respect for you for that um the other you have some other uh okay so you go to um if you go to john's profile and you clicked on his linked link tree ee or whatever not sure, linked tree uh whatever it's like a little website thing that um you have a shelter kitchen is that um is that still a thing yeah yeah, no, we took we took a little bit of time off after uh, Bone got cancer there, uh, and we were just we're just kind of dealing with that and just seeing kind of on getting him getting him better and healthy again, so we can kind of go back full full time into things. But yeah, I have a I have a vegan food blog that uh, where we donate fifty percent of the the revenue we earn on the the blog through the ads that are on the blog. We donate that back to uh, local, local shelters. Uh, and we, last year we, we were able to donate over $3,000. So it was, uh, it's been pretty cool. And the, the other 50% just goes back into the blog to, to grow it so we can raise even more money and, you know, you know, hire more people so we can raise more money, make it bigger and better. And then, you know, keep, can kind of continue that cycle where next year we want to raise over $10,000. And then the next year we want to, you know, continue kind of going like that. I love it. Um, so I have a question about you. You like you're a very proud vegan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, now uh, you you were also a you're n- you're not a uh, you're not an unmuscular dude either. Um, I'll I'll tell you that right now. Like you're 
<laughs> you play football. Um, do you have to watch the the plant sources that you eat? Like, do you do you have to plan your day to get enough protein? Um, uh, like, I, I I just have that question as somebody who's uh, who lifts weights myself, and, I, and there's no way I lift as much as you. But I, I know that's one thing you got to watch is your protein intake. No, of course, and you know that's actually a really great question. And 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 at first, I certainly did. Um, when I first went vegan, cause I, I obviously haven't been vegan my entire life. Almost no one is right. So, uh, I went vegan almost five years ago now. And at first it was very difficult at, at first I, you know, my entire life I ate, I grew up on, you know, you need to eat meat, to, you know, for protein to get big and strong and all that. But, uh, you know, so I went, when I went vegan, I had to reteach myself how to get protein, where to get it from. And, and so it was very difficult at the start mm. uh, to to get that protein and to figure out where I was getting it from. Uh, now it's just so ne- second nature to me. You know, like I said, I've been no- doing it almost five years. That uh, it's ba- it's basically you know when I was eating meat, like I where I was getting my protein, and now as a vegan, I know where I'm getting my protein mm. in. Um, and it's funny because now I actually get like I'm so hyper aware of where all my protein sources is. I get so much more protein <laughs> in now awesome. as a vegan than I ever did um, as a as a meat eater. Which is it, I, I always you know it's always funny when that question comes up because I'm like yeah I actually eat way more protein now. <laughs> yeah, I I love. Thanks for that. I, I hope my question wasn't offensive. I just was curious. Oh, no. no, oh no, God, yeah. no, yeah. It's 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 a super common question. I, I get it yeah. all the time. So it's it's like completely valid. <laughs> Um, I know I, uh, we have, uh, like pea protein, um, and shakes sometimes. And that's, I mean, that's, uh, not what you do obviously for all of your protein, but that's great. Um, I've checked out some of your recipes too. You, uh, you have a recipe. Is that on the vegan blog again? Yeah. Yeah. That's all on the, the, the vegan yeah, blog. Perfect. Yeah. Hey everybody. I thought I would just give you some ideas about how you could support the science podcast. Number one, you could support us on Patreon. Check out patreon.com backslash Bunsen Burner. There's multiple tiers of support, and the lowest tier of support is not much more than a cup of coffee a month. The second way is you could check out our merch shop. We've worked really hard to partner with clothing companies that do a great job of providing vibrant colors and soft feels. We also have the Beaker Stuffy for sale. It's so cute. The third way you could support us is giving us great reviews on our podcast playing apps any kind of review helps and if you can't find a review share our podcast with people thanks everybody if you have some questions and you want to ask john a question now's the time i'll open up the floor um so if you are a speaker i guess there's a couple people still stayed speaker from when dorothy was here uh if you have a question for john all you have to do is ask to be a speaker i'm going to throw it to kim first and then kathy and then jamie um hi john i'm from hamilton ontario yay uh, i'm the proud mom of a 32 pound 32 pound pug bulldog mix who barks at the toilet do either of your dogs have where you just look at them and go you're an idiot uh that is a great question um First of all, shout out to Hamilton. I it's one of my favorite cities. I grew up going to the Iverwind Stadium, um, and I've always been a Thai Cats fan, even though we just beat you in the Grey Cup. Uh, sorry to bring that back up, but uh, yes, Bailey uh, Bone is just a weirdo. Bone Bone will like is very peculiar in the things he does. Like it, if I leave a a phone charger out, uh, he doesn't care about it. If I leave headphones, like wired headphones out, he absolutely destroys them in seconds. It's very, like, I don't know how he discerns the difference between them, but he somehow does. Uh, and without fail, it, like, he won't touch phone chargers, but wired headphones, he loses it. Uh, Bailey is terrified of literally everything. Uh, she uh, tried to fight my fan the other day for no reason. It wasn't even turned on or anything. It was just sitting there. She walked by it and punched it in the the fan um just like looked at her i was like okay cool uh so that's a thing and uh so yeah they both they both kind of have their their quirks and i you kind of just you just gotta roll with it you kind of just gotta roll with it and and i'm sure and i'm sure they look at me when i do things uh and they're like man this 
Like, this is the guy we got matched up with, eh? <laughs> so, so it kind of goes both ways. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for the question. No problem. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay, I'm gonna, Kathleen, you're up. Go ahead with your question. Okay. Um, hi, John. My question, I have two questions. One, I'd like an update on how Bone is doing. And secondly, uh, you are sort of a fashion icon <laughs> with your preference for shoes. How did you ever st- start that um, trend? So. Um. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll answer the first one first. Bone, uh, Bone's doing pretty good right now. Um, is is the eye that got removed? So if anybody, anybody that doesn't know, uh, Bone had cancer in his in his one eye. Uh, we had to get it removed uh, about over a month ago now, and uh, so he's down to one eye. Uh, and then upon recheck, we found out that he had uh, another disease that was affecting his other eye, and. It was actually affecting, it was affecting both eyes, but it was also affecting his other eye. So uh, he's on about 12 steroid pills a day, as well as seven eye drops a day for that eye. And um, it, that would affect anybody. Uh, He's been a super champ about it. He's doing, you know, the best he can on that. And we go for another recheck in about 10 days. So uh, hopefully we can get him off the steroid pills because those seem to be affecting him the most. But uh, other than that, like his eye is clearing up, which is amazing. We weren't sure if we were going to have to lose that eye too. So from one, I'm no vet and, you know, I definitely don't pretend to be. But uh, from what I can tell, his other eye is looking a lot better. Um, as for your second question about me being a fashion icon, um, I don't think anyone's actually seriously <laughs> called me that. Uh, although I consider myself one. But uh uh, I don't know. It really stems from basically, I basically, you know, I just didn't, just don't care really for fashion. So I would always get like made fun of for the things I wore. Like, like it's funny because I'm a professional athlete, but uh, I wear like $25 running shoes from Walmart because like, I don't, like, I'm not going to spend $200 on Nikes because that's ridiculous. Um, so like, I would always get made fun of for it. But I kind of just turned it into like part of like who I am now because like I I just don't care about it. Uh, all these people want to you know like make fun of me for it and I just kind of I just kind of own it at this point uh, you know and then you can't be made fun of about something that you know doesn't doesn't bother you right oh I actually love it and love of Crocs is famous it's great I think it's great absolutely um, you're just who you are and who you are is the terrific guy who takes care of a couple of rescue dogs, one of whom is having huge health issues. So thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for the questions, Kathleen. Hey, uh, John, if you ever want a uh, Loki, like little Loki crowns for your Crocs, I'll send you some, I can 3d print you some. I don't know if you've been watching Loki on oh. Disney plus. I, you know what? I actually finished it in one day while mom was here. <laughs> um, it was great, but it wasn't long. No. Enough. I was actually pretty upset about <laughs> no. that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Jamie, you're up. David's on deck. And uh, Cookie, you're in the wing. So, Jamie, go ahead. Hey, everybody. It, calling from the future once again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, mi- it's midday Wednesday here. Um, so, Kathleen almost asked my question. But I was going to say, how many pairs of Crocs do you have? That's, you know, what that's, I, it, it fluctuates for me. Um, that's a great question, Jamie. I, it, it fluctuates a, a lot because uh, Bailey has a thing for shoes. I thought so. Um, yeah, she, so if, if you, sometimes you, I get called out for it in my stories on Instagram sometimes, but you can see my shoe rack is actually above all of my cupboards in my kitchen <laughs> because it can't be out front because Bailey is a menace. Um, but, uh, I usually have about three or four pairs, uh, on the go. <laughs> and, and I also have, um, I also have the winter Crocs, uh, which are a game changer. If no one has ever heard of the winter Crocs, they're like insulated with, um, not, it's, it's definitely not fur. It's something not, it's something else, but 
Uh, it's basically insulated with something like that. And uh, they're they're amazing. They're the best drone. Also, do you, your dogs get so like some sort of crunchy food, like the Golden Ratio gets their carrots? My dogs get Granny Smith apples. Um. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, actually, because of um, because of the golden ratio, I uh, tested carrots on Bone and Bailey, and they both they both love carrots. They also both love celery, mm. which is which is really which is really fun. Uh, but we we I try not to give them too much too much like outside food, just because like especially with Bone right now with everything going on with him and his stomach. Uh, I just don't, I don't give them too much kind of outside foods, just as like normal food. <laughs> yeah, ours are, ours are, don't like carrots. They just sort of go Pleh, and spit them out. Yeah. But apples, they've just all developed a, a an absolute obsession with apples at the moment. So it's, it's good. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah, thank you for the question, Jamie. Thanks for tuning in from Australia, Jamie. No worries. <laughs> um, David, you're up. Yeah. Hi. Um, I just uh, took up, um, oh, my gosh, the suggestion and followed your page there, John. And I was curious, uh, having such two uh, large pups uh, in your house, um, do they like to go for rides? And what kind of vehicle do you have to bring them in if they do? Yeah. You know what? Um I actually posted a, uh, a picture on my Instagram a couple of years ago. Uh, basically, everything I do now mm-hmm. revolves around my dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I bought when I bought my bed, I bought a California king bed for them so they could fit. When I bought my couch, I bought like a seven seater couch that's like super deep so it could double as their uh, dog bed. Um, and then I, when I first moved to Winnipeg, I was driving this, you know, this tiny little Hyundai Elantra. I loved it. It was this great little car that I could rip around in. And, you know, it it was a beater so I could beat it up and not care. Um, And then I had bone for it for about a season. And he took up the entire back seat. Uh, And then at the time I was, I was dating a girl who was, uh, who had a, about 110 pound German shepherd. And then I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta upgrade, especially because my plan has always been to continue adopting more big dogs. Uh, so now I drive a, a Hyundai Santa Fe XL, which is, uh, you know, specially designed. It's basically the ultimate mom car. It's kind of like a van, but uh, cooler, I guess. Uh, if you can, you know, drive a cooler mom car. Uh, it's a seven seater, but I always have the back seats down. I, I've ne- literally never had my back seats up. Um, I've only ever had my back seats down and, and I have a dog bed in the back for them. And I've driven, uh, I I've driven across Canada in it with, uh, with the dogs in the car. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah. I just, I recently gotten, uh, familiar with the bones breed from, uh, YouTube. There's a couple of channels I follow and there's this local couple here in Florida that they have a golden and a, and a, and a, a Pyrenees and they do funny videos about them and great Pyrenees are they're very entertaining to say the least yeah they're they're their own people uh <laughs> yeah, yeah they they do what they want that's for sure <laughs> thanks yeah no thank you David they're big enough they are a people John well, I, well exactly <laughs> right when bone when bones like I tell him to do something he kind of like looks at me and just like doesn't do it I'm just like uh, like what? What am I supposed to do here? <laughs> I can't argue with him. Like I'm just like, okay, I guess you're not doing that now. <laughs> That's hilarious. But yeah, you're good. You're good to go. Okay. Hi, John. First, uh, uh, I'm sorry for my bad English, but I'll try to talk correctly. Um, I was wondering uh, one thing. I have a cocker spaniel for about a year now, and she's like, um, very anxious eating. And we're trying to prepare for to go to Cusco next year. I live in Bolivia, so it's like right um, next country. And I'm trying to 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 teach her not to eat everything everybody gives her. So I don't know what advice can you to to um, short the amount of the the range of food she eats because if I'm gonna travel over like to another country with her. 
and she's really she really likes to eat. So yeah, yeah, she's really fat. I don't know how much how much in pounds. I think it's thirty, but she's twelve kilos. So she she has a real okay. amount of food of teeth for food. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. That's a that's a great question actually, and it's something that I, uh, with with boners too. Uh, when I first adopted bone. He was really struggling. He had a lot of food allergies um, and the shelter was giving him the food that they were donated uh, and he was like super allergic to. So he was covered in hot spots and he was just kind of he was just a mess. Uh, so for like the first like six months that I had done, it was basically trial and error of figuring out what foods he could and couldn't eat. And, you know, trying to figure out his hot spots and, and he was on a ton of med- medication to, you know, get healthier. He's had a pretty, he's had a pretty rough go of it. Um, but that meant I, I had to learn how to set boundaries a lot with other people because, uh, because every time someone wants to, every time someone sees bone, they're like, oh my God, can I give him a treat? Especially when we're out somewhere, if we're at a restaurant, if we're, you know, in a pet store and things like that, everyone always wants to give him a treat, but he's almost always allergic to all of them. So, uh, so I, I, I really had to like learn, be like, oh, you know, no, actually he, you know, he's allergic. Uh, you know, he's, we can't have him eating treats at all. You know, it'll be really bad for him. Um, and things like that. So, uh, that was, that was probably the biggest thing that I had to learn how to do, uh, because, because without it, he, like people would have just kept giving him treats and he could, he would have just like kept doing, um, he would have just kept eating everything like that. So, uh, that would probably be my number one recommendation. If you, if you don't want other people, um, like feeding him, feeding them treats so that they, they don't get uh, more fat. Um, that would probably be, probably be your best bet is just setting those boundaries with other people around you all right okay great question i got a question uh via message uh because the person's kind of didn't can't speak so i'll just read it to you read it to you john if that's okay for sure Uh, was wondering what the your dog diets are for your pyrenees uh for so bone i guess what what do you feed bone yeah that's uh that's something i get asked uh like every day uh especially <laughs> as a vegan that's uh and uh i generally don't talk about it too much because a lot of people like to use it as some like gotcha moment for mm. because i'm vegan um but he's on like i like i was saying before he's so like he's a, so allergic to so many foods that he's on a specific uh vet diet it's mm-hmm. the it's the hills brand uh it's, i think it's salmon and sweet potato or something like that uh super expensive oh, no. <laughs> and uh it just yeah the, the bills never stop with them but uh it's the one he doesn't react to it like i i probably tried i want to say like 20 different dog food brands uh i went through to and he was just like you know he'd be good on it for like a month and then act uh, and things like that so uh we finally got him on this one we we actually had a we had a dog nutritionist because apparently dog nutritionists are a thing, and uh, we paid we paid a bunch of money for a dog nutritionist to come in, um and and run a bunch of tests and and do some stuff and uh, we got him on this new this new hypoallergenic hills blend and uh, he's doing really well on it he he loves it um, and he's not reacting that's you know that's ultimately we, what we want right. Um, Pio is up and then Paula is on deck and John, do you have another 10 minutes or, or do you have to get going? Oh no, I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm just hanging out with the dogs tonight. Not so yeah, okay. I, ask away. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, Pio, you're, you're up. You just have to unmute yourself to ask the question. Um, hi John. How are you? Um, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm a dog walker, and I I used to walk a 150 pound Saint Bernard Great Pyrenees mix, and he got more attention than I've ever had with a dog. And I was wondering if you ever have that with your dogs, because everybody wanted selfies or guys that were some pro basketball players that were in that complex would come running up and absolutely do selfies with the dog. So if sometimes your dog, you know, become more famous than you. (laughs) 
Uh, my dogs are one million percent more famous than me. That's uh, no questions asked. I was, uh, um, I'm a fullback. Uh, I play fullback, and uh, most people don't know what that position is be- for a reason. Uh, it's because we just block for the running back, so we just make someone else look very good. Um, but we get no recognition for our jobs. So, you know, the first two years I was in Winnipeg, I didn't have a dog. And then my right at the end of the second season, I adopted Bone. Uh, and by the time that third season rolled around, um, like no one, like the first two years here, no one ever recognized me at all. Like no, one, like, and that, that was fine by me. You know, I was not upset about that. Like I was like, this is my job. This is what I do. Like I would prefer not to, <laughs> not to be recognized. Uh, but then when I adopted Bone, uh, and like I was walking down the street with him, like pe- people will, will stop their cars in the middle of the street and get out. Uh, they'll be like, oh, my God, that's Bone. Uh, and they're like, you're Bone's dad. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. Bone, Bone's dad. <laughs> like, um, so, yeah, no, one, one million percent. My dogs are uh, significantly more famous than me. Uh, and they get when I when I lived back home in, in uh, Ontario, I traveled to Toronto work I was doing and I would bring Bone along whenever I could. Uh, and it was a nightmare walking around Toronto because the streets of Toronto are just so busy that uh, it, we, we couldn't walk more than like 20 feet without being like mauled by a group of people that would no. that made it like made it impossible to move. But it, it, it was uh, uh, it was awesome to see because I mean. He's such a great dog that he really, you know, deserves all that. No, attention. that's great. I, I totally relate to what you're saying because people stop cars on the street and would park on the side and run up and take pictures. And we used to call him Mr. Hollywood because it was, uh, you know, I had fun with the owner because everybody thought I was the owner, but I was a dog walker. But it was just he walked me. It was like walking a pony. It was great. It, I loved it. So I just I love your stories and I can totally relate. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. When you when you're walking with them, right? It's the, they're kind of dictating what's going on. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, hard to control them sometimes, which is uh, which is always a lot of fun. Thank you. I kind of know what you feel about having dogs that are more famous than you, John. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pio. Hello. Hello, good day. Hi, John. Hi to all the speakers and the listeners. I'm Pio from the Philippines. My dog, Dalgo, my, the name of my dog is Dalgo. So I have a, I have a question. Kind of nervous, but uh, my dog uh, is vegetarian. What veggies should I not give her? Thank you. That's Hi, Pio. That's, um, thank you for coming up and, and asking your question. Um, I mean, I'm certainly not a vet um so that question's probably better asked to a vet or uh doing some probably research on the internet a little bit there's some pretty great resources out there if you google uh if if a vegetable is safe to eat for a dog or not because it's actually surprising which uh which vegetables and fruits can be actually toxic dogs and which ones can't be um some safe ones that generally uh, I, I usually go with, like I said before, carrots and celery are pretty pretty safe bets. Pumpkin's a really good one as well, and it's really good for dogs' stomachs, uh, especially if your dog's having some, like, troubles. If you want to add, like, some, like, digestive, it, digestive issues, adding, like, pumpkin puree to their food and things like that can really help. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, it um, you know, it, it depends on a lot of different factors, uh, like how big your dog is. Um, <clears throat> You know, I'm, I'm pretty lucky with how big Bone and Bailey are that they can basically just eat whatever they want and it's not going to affect them in the slightest. But that can it can be a serious choking hazard for smaller dogs. Uh, so there's, you know, there's there's a lot of factors that kind of play into it. So you want to be you want to be careful with what you're feeding them. And, and generally, uh, you know, just doing a preliminary Google search, then asking your vet can, can really good results. Yeah, our dogs love carrots too, John. They 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 go mental for carrots. It's crazy for them. Love yeah, them, really love them, love them. <laughs> uh, Nancy, who was on the chat earlier, uh, she just do. She sent me a message, John. She just said, uh, um, "Thank you so much for your vegan recipes. They're easy to make and they're delicious." Wow. Well, there you go. That's a, that's 
it's good to, you know, it's good to hear that people are enjoying them and I enjoy them. So <laughs> it's nice. It's nice that other people are enjoying them too. <laughs> oh, we have one more. Another comment got sent. John, have you ever thought of about starring in a sitcom? <laughs> You're very funny and Canadian. Um, please tell him I tweeted to him. Ketchup chips don't belong on chips. Um, that was Howie. <laughs> Howie's wrong. Uh, ketchup chips are definitely one of the best chips. They 100% are the best chip. Um, <laughs> anybody who thinks different is wrong. Uh, have I ever thought about starring in a comedy uh, or a sitcom? That's a, a great question. Um, yes and no. I actually got asked to be in about three uh, reality shows last year. Uh, one of them being The Bachelorette. Um, but it, uh, like they asked me to do it and I kind of went through the preliminary interview and then I just straight up iced them. I just stopped replying because uh, I don't know, like I thought I, I, I entertained it for a bit, but then I'm like, you know what, this show is so like greasy and there, like, there's so many like issues with this show that I'm like, I couldn't kind of go through with it. Um, although it, you know, it, I think it would have been hilarious, but, uh, yeah, it just kind of went against all my morals to do that. So uh, but the other show, uh, the other show got canceled because of COVID. I actually was supposed to fly out and two weeks after it, it got canceled. Uh, that was a cooking show. Uh, and the third one, and uh, we're on live, so it's not a big deal, but um, is Naked and Afraid. So uh, we're just kind of like waiting on that one to see what goes on. Uh, and that will be a hilarious one to be in. But um, yeah, I've been, we've, We've kind of joked around with the idea because I do, you know, you know how you do your Twitter spaces. I do my Instagram live uh, kind of like every Friday with my family uh, and people think my family's hilarious. And I've always I've always thought it would be hilarious to have a reality TV show with my family because they're <laughs> all crazy. Uh, they're all basically like Bailey, but humans. Um, and I think it would be hilarious. Um but no, no TV network has approached me yet about it. I guess we're not, I guess we're not famous enough for them yet. So I just keep working on that one. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So I know you, you're definitely, uh, your Instagram account is, um, is fairly large and I, I have, I have, uh, I'm just not on Instagram, I, but I know you do Instagram live, uh, like kind of these spaces is that, that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Every, every Friday we do, uh, it's called the bone zone, um, <laughs> <laughs> named after bone. And, um, yeah, it, it's basically, it's very similar to this. And then I like a topic to discuss and, uh, and we kind of just like have fun with it. And, you know, like, la like last week we, when mom was in Winnipeg, I brought her on and then my family kind of just like took turns telling like the worst stories about like me growing up and like all the, <laughs> all the, all the stupid things that me and my brother got in, uh, growing up. Uh, and that was, that was a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, every Friday we, we, we do that and, and it's, uh, yeah. that's, that's, that's great. I also appreciate your very Canadian use of the word greasy to explain something kind of sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I don't know if the I, Americans would have caught that. So <laughs> oh, I, I, every time I use the word chirp too, chirp, I, yeah. I, like so many Americans, especially, especially in the, uh, in the locker room too, like half of, half the team is American. Right. So when you, sometimes when you say stuff, they kind of look at you and they're like, Oh yeah, you're from America. I forgot. <laughs> but like all the Canadians are like, you know, like we're, we're chopping up, talking about like chirping each other, or, you know, or, or we'll like say stupid things like, Oh, like go bar down. Um, and all the Americans look at us like we're crazy. Uh, and I'm just like, oh, I forget you didn't grow up in Canada and don't understand all of these things just naturally. Yeah, they'll get that uh, Eastern Canada bag milk and they won't know what hit them. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, right? Uh, okay, I'll, I, you've been so gracious with your time, John. Thank you so much for joining us for Spaces, um, sticking around. It's been an hour and a half here. So everybody, please follow John. Um, Bone and Bailey and check out his Instagram page we'll pop in one of these Fridays I think for your Instagram live too nice yeah no thanks for having me on I really uh, you know I really appreciate it and I love I love tuning into these when I can it's a it's they're always a lot of fun and they're always super informative uh, listening to especially the scientists talk because uh, like I said I'm just a local idiot so I always learn a lot uh, listening to these which is, is always nice Hey, if you can listen to uh, spaces that's about lasers and giant dogs I think I think that's a win.